latest diagrams show how attributes are related to each other. And so it's possible to read some dependencies between attributes directly from them. These are dependencies of the type if-then. If an object has some attributes, it also has some other attributes. Such dependencies are called implications, and we'll spend some time with implications later. For now, let's see a few examples of how they can be spotted in a lattice diagram. So, here we see that the node labeled by 15 degrees is below the node labeled by 16 degrees. This means that the extent of the concept of wines served at 15 degrees is a subset of the extent of wines served at 16 degrees. Or in other words, every wine served at 15 degrees can also be served at 16 degrees. That's an example of an implication. If a wine can be served at 15 degrees, it also can be served at 16 degrees. This is true for our data. Maybe it's not true for all the red wines. Now, let's see what happens if a wine can be served at a temperature 16 degrees and 18 degrees. We find these two concepts, one labeled by 16, the other labeled by 18. And then we need to find the concept that covers all wines that can be served at any of these two temperatures. We do this by following the descending paths, starting from both nodes and see where they meet. Here they meet at the node labeled by Barbera. So the wines that can be served at temperatures 16 and 18 degrees are Barbera, Burgundy, Barolo and Bordeaux. And they all can be served also at the temperature 17 degrees, because 17 degrees is in the intent of the concept labeled by Barbera. More generally, if a wine can be served at some two temperatures, X and Y, it can be served at any temperature between them. Well, this doesn't have to be true in general, but our data says that it, it is true for the wines that we consider here. Here is another example. This is a concept lattice of beverages. Um, the attributes are various properties of beverages, such as hot, non-alcoholic, alcoholic, sparkling, and caffeinic, which means it has caffeine inside. There's also an attribute beverage, but here we have only beverages, so every object has it, and we have this attribute at the top of the diagram. The objects include beverages such as champagne, beer, mineral water, wine, cola, coffee, and herb tea. So, what implications do I have here? First of all, let's see, is there any beverage that is at the same time hot and sparkling? To see this, we look at the two nodes labeled by hot and sparkling, they're shown in blue here, and then we follow the downward paths, starting from them and see where they meet. They meet in the bottom node, which has no objects in it, in its extent. It's the concept of nothing. There is no beverage that has all the properties, so the extent of the bottom concept here is empty. It means that no sparkling beverage is hot, at least in our data. We can also see that no alcoholic beverage is non-alcoholic, which is to be expected. And again we see it by following the downward path starting at nodes non-alcoholic and alcoholic. Another implication that we have here is that hot beverages are necessarily non-alcoholic. Well, of course, this is not true in general, because mulled wine is alcoholic and hot. But we don't have this kind of wine in our data, so in our context, this implication holds. If a beverage is hot, it is non-alcoholic. And another implication is that beverages that contain caffeine are also non-alcoholic. And again, this is true for our data, but may not be true in general. Another interesting thing that we can see in this diagram is that champagne and beer label the same node. This means that given the attributes we choose to describe them, champagne and beer are indistinguishable. If we really want to make a distinction between them, we must introduce an additional attribute that champagne has and beer doesn't, or vice versa. 
we can also see here that uh, beer is below wine. So beer, in, according to this diagram, is a special type of wine. Well, this is not true. This means that we probably need another attribute to make distinction between them.